So let's start with a circle right here for the head. And it's about the size of your water bottle. I love using the water bottle terminology because it's just, it's very relatable. And I would do it in the middle of your paper, honestly. You know what? Yeah, I'm cheating. This is what we, this is what we call being resourceful, friends. We just use our resources all around us. Okay. Now, quite frankly, just to make things easier, I'm going to have my sloth facing me head on. So that way my sloth, the face isn't at a tilt. It's more head on, and I can do symmetry here. So I'm going to split this into four parts to help me with my symmetry, right? And let's see. Your elbow here is one sloth head down. So when you're ready for the elbow, feel free to take your sloth head between your finger and your four uh, your forefinger and your thumb and just kind of, you know, bring it down here. This is the elbow and and give yourself like a little, I don't know, a little V for like the elbow. So from elbow over, we're just going to see like how long your body is, all right? It's one sloth head wide. So measure from your elbow to where your hip starts curving up and you get one sloth head here. So, kind of just add a curve here. We just found that part. Um, back hip. Okay, so this circle here for your body is going to be one and a half sloth heads tall. So, I'm just going to put this right here for my bottom. Now, I'm going to measure up. I'm going to measure up one and a half head heads tall. So and it looks like this dips down a bit. So I'm going to just put my line down here a little bit. Let's see. One and a half. I know it looks kind of wonky, but just just use your best measurement. Because we're going to kind of get that little fat belly in there. And then we're going to use this to kind of connect everything together. It's just maybe about a pinky's width down from your back hip. That's where you're going to start the bottom of your circle. Um, I'm going to erase my arrow here. You don't, you don't need it anymore. All right. Now, the circle contains part of your back leg here, all right? So we're literally going to measure from our back leg here in to see how thick this leg is, right? So it's literally half a sloth head in thickness. So if you were to go here and line it up to your back hip, your leg would literally be... this thick. Kind of made it a little too thicker up here. But this is this leg here. And feel free to kind of lengthen it up. Let's see let's see how far out we need it. We need at least we need it, the space of our knee. We need at least half half a sloth head away. See mine's too short from your big circle here. So your brain's going to want to cut yourself short here because it's going based off of the experiences of other animals and what we've seen. But the sloth has an abnormally large uh, set of legs and arms. So we, we got to at least make sure that the space here is at least half a sloth head in height. And we're going to use that stomach that we've made to kind of figure out the other leg that's further out. Let's see. 
The other leg that's further out is literally, if you were to line it up, it's literally a full sloth head in height. So just line it up here where your leg connects to your circle. And, you know, give yourself a little tick mark here. And I would even do like a little circle here because it kind of wraps around the vine. And then add like a, like a series of curves on the side here to kind of, ooh, looks like I'm going to have to put this over here just a little bit. Because see the knee kind of kisses the other knee, right? Here's my circle. And then there's my leg. So when you got your circle and your leg, feel free to erase part of the bottom half of your top circle here. Now that we have our first layer in, it is now time to add our second layer. Now the tan and the face, we are gonna leave as is. We're gonna add our secondary layer to the light brown area, or kind of like, yeah, the light brown area, and to the area that's gonna be dark brown. But we're leaving the face as is because our key here tells us that we only need one layer in the face to help separate our face from our darker fur. So let's add a secondary layer to everything except the areas that are considered tan. Okay, we're going to keep doing what we did for layer one. We're just gonna repeat, it's very simple. Now that you actually have the muscle development in, you kind of know exactly where to put your lines. If you have a muscle group that is on top of another muscle group, I highly advise adding an additional layer of ink in that area to help that side of the arm pop, okay? Now I'm noticing that my throat here, my throat here is a little bit darker than my actual body. So I'm just going to quick pepper in a third layer there to help make that pop. Now my stomach is lighter than my leg. So I'm going to start adding some shade or shadow in the leg and spine area to help that stomach pop. Once again, I have a limb that is up against another area of the body. In order to help separate that, I'm going to add or feather in just a lighter layer of shade just on the edge of that limb to help make it pop. We're doing feather-like strokes here, okay? We're not going crazy with it. We're not carving our heart or soul into paper. Super feather light strokes. Now the talons here, however, it's probably best to kind of use straight line construction here, meaning that you're using straight, as straight of strokes as possible. And I would even shade the talons. I would just shade the space in between the talons to help make the talons come out as like an ivory entity or a white bone, so to speak. It's gonna help make those talons pop more, okay? When you're comfortable, feel free to start adding your third layer to your dark brown area in your sloth's body. So now that we have our layer number two and our layer number one in there, our eyeballs are kind of disappearing into the abyss of fur on this creature that we call the sloth. <laughs> so let's kind of block those in there with our darkest dark, feel free to press decently well into your paper and leave a little circle inside your eye for the shine or the highlight spot. Let's kind of, you know, add some definition to that face marking here. Looks like they kind of have almost like a little mask. 
and feel free to kind of, you know, add some nostrils and get kind of funky with this mouth here. We really want this nose to kind of pop up from our sloth's face. So if you want to have the top of your nose be lighter than the bottom, feel free to lighten up your pressure. I really don't care. I'm going to make mine pitch black. I'm going to do the same thing with the mouth. So the mouth pops out and you should be able to see, excuse me, this sloth's face a lot more easily. Now they kind of have like a lazy expression or kind of like a sleepy expression. They don't really have a lot of nutrients. They eat a bunch of leaves. So they're constantly sleepy all the time. So let's add some kind of curves above the eyes for kind of like a, like a hooded expression, right? To kind of get that sloth looking like he's like, <sighs> just waking up, you know? And when you're done doing that, we'll then start adding a third layer to crispen up the edges of our sloth's body and add any additional area in which you need a third layer to be seen. You might even need to feather up or help kind of clarify your sloth's body by adding some like fur tidbits here and there in between some open spaces. This is the time to finite or fine tune your uh, artwork before uh, setting in your third layer. Once you're ready, feel free to start adding in that third layer using kind of a feather light touch and focus on the areas that are more, that have more space between them when it comes to line quality. Add some lines in between that will kind of help darken up your image and give you a little more um, darkness without going too far too quickly. Remember, feather light. 